using a big boy Bible or you need this one? Good morning. Would you like to turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 5? We'll be in verse 43 is where we'll begin. Finally going to make it through the first chapter of the Sermon on the Mount. It only took us till September. Um, before we get started, I do want to give a quick update on my mom. She, uh, so I mean, she had a seizure a couple weeks ago and uh, subsequently broke her shoulder. Um, she feels good enough to go to church. She is worshiping in Temperanceville this morning. Um, she's still in pain. She goes Tuesday to the orthopedic and they'll discuss surgery or therapy. They're still having issues with the neurologist. Um, but she appreciates the prayers and the concerns and the meals. And uh, she wanted me to say thank you. And I say thank you. But isn't it easy to love someone that loves us back? To love someone that we have something in common with. Y'all love my mom. She loves y'all. We as parents, we love our kids. Our kids love us. We go out of our way. We do what we can for our children. Our spouses, our husband, our wife. We spoil them. We try to take care of them. And even our friends and our neighbors, um, people that we, we associate with, that, that we have something in common with, it, it's easy to love and, and have affection for, for people like that. Well, the Jews that Jesus is speaking to in the Sermon on the Mount, they did the same thing. They, they, they loved their fellow Jews. But that's as far as it went. In Leviticus 19, verses 17 and 18, right, you shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. What the Jews did was, was they, they took that. And, and they took that command, they took that law to love one another, to love each other, just to be for the Jews. They, they, they didn't include the outside world, the other nations, the other tribes. The Jews loved the Jews. They took the law, but they took it one step too far. Now we know God hates sin. In fact, Proverbs 8.13 Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. So the Jews, the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments, the law was given to the Jews. They were commanded to love one another. But they kept it within themselves. They, they loved their fellow Jews. They knew God hated sin, and so they took the law one step further, and instead of just hating sin, they hated the sinner. And that was a tradition, that was what the, the, they had been taught for years and years and years. And that's the antithesis now that Jesus comes up with in verse 43. says, you have heard it said, or you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor, but hate your enemy. They were never commanded to hate their enemy. Please, my first point is we are never commanded to hate anyone. 
Again, Leviticus 19, verse 18, Moses writes concerning the law. He says, You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 1 John, we're told in 1 John 4, verses 20 and 21. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has not seen, cannot love God, whom he has seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And then again in Romans, to me Romans chapter 12, Paul writes, verses 9 and 10, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing love. The Jews have been used to showing love to Jews. That was their tradition. That was what they had grown accustomed to. Jesus comes along. And with the spirit of the law, he says, you are to love everyone. He takes the term neighbor, and the Jews had, had taken that, that, that neighbor to mean just Jews. Jesus is saying, your neighbor is everybody. Actually, the word neighbor, it means anyone that you're in close proximity with. Jesus is giving the spirit of the law. Continue in verse 40, 44. In Matthew 5, Jesus says, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of the Father who is in heaven. A few weeks ago, Dave was up here. And, and, and he spoke of, of the story of the Good Samaritan. Now, if you remember the good story of the Good Samaritan, let me back up. Samaritans and Jews didn't like each other. They weren't friends. And so for the Samaritan to be walking along the path and, and, and see this Jew hurting, that made them neighbors because they were in close proximity to each other, just their physical presence they became neighbors. And so the Samaritan goes out of his way to help his neighbor. He also mentioned, Dave mentioned John chapter 15. So this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that someone lay down his life for their friends. Oh, leaves my second point. Is we're supposed to love and pray for everyone. Our neighbor is anyone that we are in close physical proximity to. If you remember the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, back in verse 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Here in verse 44, he says, To love our neighbor so that we can be called sons of your Father. Jesus, the greatest teacher who ever was, speaking from the greatest sermon that was ever preached tells us to pray for those who persecute us tells us to love our enemies but instead of just saying that instead of just telling us what to do he's going to show us what to do coming up shortly in the Sermon on the Mount he's actually going to teach us how to pray but Jesus is going to spend the next three years of his life or so three or so years 
after the Sermon on the, uh, on the Mount, showing us how to love one another. Folks, it can safely be assumed that many of the people, or some of the people hearing the Sermon on the Mount, some of the people on the mountainside that Jesus was talking to, three years from now, will be the same one saying, crucify him. Crucify him. Jesus loved him anyway. If you remember, on the cross, as he, as he was dying, he looked to the thief, and he told the thief, he said, today you will be with, with me in paradise. Do you remember one of the last things that Jesus did? He prayed for the people. The very ones who had beat him and, and, and tortured him, put the crown of thorns on his head, were, were mocking him. One of the last things he did was he prayed to his father and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Folks, that is love. That is the love that Jesus has for us. That's the love that we're supposed to have for our neighbors. I want to I offer a challenge. Think of someone who you may not really care for. Obviously, we, 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 should, we don't hate any, or shouldn't hate anyone. But think of someone that, that maybe you just don't really get along with very well. According to the world standards, you know, you could call them an enemy, but just someone that, that you disagree with. Uh, maybe it's a politician. Maybe it, it, it's a teacher. If you're a student, this teacher always gives you bad grades and, and you don't really care for them. If you're a teacher, you have a student who's always disturbing the class, always being the wise guy. Or, or, or a boss that they don't really care for, they, they never compliment you. And yet just think of someone who if they weren't, if you didn't have a relationship with them anymore, you wouldn't miss it. Think, th think of one person, if you can, like that. And my challenge, my prayer challenge to you is every time you pray, pray for that person by name. The ladies on Tuesday night have their have their prayer or have their their, their class um, on 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 the, the internet. They begin with a prayer. Wednesday morning a group of men get together at Sean's house and we pray. Wednesday evening before a Wednesday evening Bible study we always pray. So when you pray just think of uh, this one person and pray for them by name. My challenge is, see what happens in two weeks. They may or may not change, but I can almost guarantee your attitude towards that person will change. And if we can pray for someone who we don't care about, and we can love that person, the way that Jesus loved us, that's the love that Jesus is talking about. Let's continue. The Sermon on the Mount, verse 46, says, So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Now remember, Matthew, the author, was a tax collector. This is chapter 9. Um, Jesus calls Matthew to be one of his apostles, and, and, and he gets together with Matthew, and Matthew's friends other fellow tax collectors. 
Matthew's hanging out with people that he's familiar with. And folks, that's what the Jews were doing. The Jews were loving people, hanging out with people that they were familiar with. Jesus is coming along and saying, stop. Love everybody. Even the Gentiles. The Gentiles hang out with the Gentiles. The Gentiles like other Gentiles. Jesus is telling us to love everyone. He says, a sun. If the sun comes out today, it's going to shine on us Christians. But it's also going to shine on the non-believers. The rains and, and, and hurricanes and, and floods and, and wildfires, they happen to the unjust, but they happen to the just as well. Folks, God loves everyone, and he wants us to love everyone as well. And this leaves my third and final point. They will know we are Christians by our love. John 13, 35. John writes, Oh, there it is. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. But we do great praying and loving each other. I don't know about you all, but I miss the fellowship dinners. I miss getting together once a month and we all congregate next door and then we say a prayer and we just eat and we just fellowship together. Back in, in March and April and May, and those were some long Sunday nights, I missed the, 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 the fellowship with the teens that are devos. Folks, just being together with, with, with Christians, with people we love, that's awesome. That's great. I miss a full auditorium. I miss being able to have everyone safely uh, uh, be here and, and congregate and fellowship together. But folks, we're supposed to love everyone. Our love is not to be contained with Christians. They will know we are Christians by our love. I don't have the stats in front of me, but you know when the Church of Christ had its greatest growth? The Church of Christ had its greatest growth after World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. The reason is because people were, were, were hurting. They, they, they needed something. And the Church was loving people. What happened? Because it's to a point that the denominations were actually afraid of the Church of Christ. We scared them because we were loving people. We were showing love. People could see the love. They wanted to be part of the love that we had. People wanted that. Are we doing that today? Remember the verse from Romans 12 and verse 10. Paul writes, to love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Folks, I, I, I say this often, and, I, and I'll probably say it more times. But you'll never see anyone that God does not want in heaven. Now you can see all the teachers and parents and think, oh, no school just started and the preacher's using a double negative. Well, see what Peter said. Second Peter 3, verse 9. Peter puts it this way. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Folks, our scripture reading today and our theme for the year, here am I, send me. 
folks, if we're to go out and we're to love, it may be people we don't care for. It, it, it may be people outside our, our race, our heritage, our, our economic status. But folks, God tells us to love and love everyone. And when we say, here am I, send me, we have to go where God sends us. Folks, if you need help loving people, if we can pray for you, pray with you, if we can show you God's love, let us know. Please come as we stand and sing.